What is up, guys, and welcome to the Casual Wrestling Show. I am your host of the show, the Notorious Nerdy D, alongside uh, my amazing podcasting and life partner, the one and only Level Up, Lauren. What's up, y'all? Each and every week, me and Lauren will discuss four topics in pro wrestling for your listening enjoyment. Every episode can be found for your viewing pleasure on YouTube.com. And if you don't feel like staring at our beautiful faces, then you can listen on all major podcast networks. The four topics will then be broken down and posted Monday through Thursday with the complete episode posting on Fridays. Quick shout out to this week's Patreon producers, J by proxy muscle fiend 53 Randall Beatley OG Ian the noobs Newberry and OG it's Zinni Lauren. Let's jump right into topic number one. All right. So topic number one this week is going to be just the biggest headlines from the past week of wrestling. That's okay. what we're going to talk about. So I have five headlines we can talk about. First, let's talk about Sami Zayn and SmackDown and, and Sami Zayn acknowledging Jay Uso as head of the table. Nice. And, and then the uh, the exchange of the little like uh, fist pound situation. Get like, out of this is interesting to me. This is this is cool. This is the most compelling thing going on in wrestling right now. I agree. It's uh, it, 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 what's sad is by comparison, everything else then sucks. Yeah. Like everything else on, on SmackDown was a little bit of a letdown. And I know we'll get to talking about it, but there's a lot of other stuff that happened that I just, I don't necessarily even remember. Yeah. I mean... I was most excited about that. And when, when I was making the notes for like five things we should talk about, five current events, it it was tough because Carmella came back. That that's so that's a Monday Night Raw thing, right? Carmella came back. You you what? I mean, what else is going on that that's relevant? Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's worth talking about. Uh, the elimination. Both of the elimination chambers are kind of filled out. Uh, Madcap Moss. Is One. the new intercontinental? But I mean, in comparison to the USO situation, nothing, nothing is that exciting or or worth paying attention to. I felt like on SmackDown, I still like I I have a real bad problem. I feel like wrestling shows are supposed to be like firework shows. Mm -hmm. You start small and you end with a grand finale that leaves everybody happy and it's why i had the complaints with the royal rumble where everybody was like you can't do that last you have to do the uh, you have to do roman and sammy i don't think that had to be last while i think that was a great like emotional moment for the for the yeah. moment i don't think that it necessarily had to be last i think you could have started the show with that and people would have kind of been talking about it through the show building up to the men's Royal Rumble ending the show. I'm not going to argue about that. Everybody has their own opinion on what should have been first, what should have been last. But I will argue the fact that I think on SmackDown that anything that has to do with Sami Zayn or the Usos needs to end the show. I agree with that. And I don't even remember what ended the show, to be honest. So it was the it was the fatal four way for the Madcap Moss one, right? Madcap Moss one. Okay, but they so and and I guess by semantics, then they cut to Paul Heyman. Yeah. Telling uh telling the Usos you guys need to stay home next week. Yeah. Don't show up. So I guess it, like kind by semantics did. they ended with a show, but I still think like all of that should be last on on TV. I was a little disappointed with the return of Jay Uso. It felt a, like so you Hokey? have you have Jay Uso walk out of the Royal Rumble, right? Mm -hmm. Like like he's done with the bloodline. Yeah. Then you have Jimmy all week trying to call him and get a hold of him and figure out where he is. You have Roman upset about it. Paul Heyman's upset about it. And then when the match starts, he just comes down from the crowd mm -hmm. like, hey, there was never a worry that I was going to show up. When, yeah. when the reality was like, I think there. How would you have done it instead then? I don't know. I, there, there had to be more tension in that moment. Would I feel you like. have let I the, think match the match actually have start? Started. Yes. And I like think, maybe he's getting the shit beat out of him and yes. then all of a sudden. And then he comes in and he should have looked conflicted on his way to the ring instead of just ready to go, amped up, more of the same, here go the Usos. And and I, I kind of get where they're building. There's a dissension, but I don't like this idea of building Jay out to be kind of deceptive. Like he's yeah. playing both sides. Yeah. Because ultimately I do think that Jay stays with the bloodline. And I do think at WrestleMania we get 
Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Jimmy and Jay Uso. Well, aren't they kind of saying that Jimmy's deceptive too? Because when Paul Heyman asked him, like, hey, what did he say? He was like, oh, nothing. Well, I don't think he really said anything, did he? I thought he said nothing. I mean, he didn't really say anything. He just kind of was like, I don't want to talk about it when they talked about like. He just, bathrooms. I thought he said, like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I he don't did think say Jimmy, something. He said, I don't know. All right. Semantics again. I don't think that, uh, I, I don't think he was, I don't think they're portraying, I think they're portraying right now the possibility that they want you to believe that an elimination chamber, Sami Zayn can beat Roman Reigns and Jay Uso may be the reason. What, what I, I mean, this is the foreshadowing that I see is it's going to come down to a moment in the elimination chamber match. Not the actual image, but the, the, the main event with Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, where Jey Uso has to pick a side. Ooh. And he's going to pick Roman Reigns. I think ultimately Daddy that's, Roman. that's what's going to happen is he's going to pick Roman, which is then going to break Sami Zayn's heart. Sami's then going to find his way back to Kevin Owens, which will then lead to a WrestleMania match between Kevin Owens and uh, between Sami and Kevin versus the Usos. Yeah. I, I think we do have to talk about the Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman promo because I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, outside, but once again, that all ties back to the bloodline, right? I, I've been saying that as long as something is part of the bloodline, it's been relatively interesting to watch, but I, that promo was good. It felt, it felt real. And I don't know what that means when you say it feels real in wrestling, but it felt real. It felt like Genuine. there were real emotions coming out of both of those men. And, and, I saw some people mocking this idea that every time Cody Rhodes goes out there, he talks about his dad. It's, I mean, it's an element of wrestling, right? He's adding realism to wrestling and it, and it makes for emotional promos and it made it, it, they, they built that promo well to where it ended with Cody telling Paul Heyman, you've made it personal. It's yeah. now tell Roman you made this personal, which, which adds another interesting wrinkle they, they had to add some way if they're not. What's funny to me is that we're heading into WrestleMania. We're less than 60 days out from WrestleMania and it's crazy. And they're not building towards the main event. There's a whole sub story going on with your world champion that has nothing to do with the person he's set to face it. Typically, like in, in years past, main events in WrestleMania have a little bit of like a build around them in the in the like the road to WrestleMania. There's a build going towards, but right now with with Sami Zayn, he's derailed that, and the focus is on Roman and Sami. And so, how do you shift that? I guess the way to do that is by using uh, Paul Heyman as a proxy, mm -hmm. having him go to Monday Night Raw, having him irritate Cody Rhodes, which will then lead. But I think you know, coming out of Elimination Chamber. It'll be interesting to see how they actually decide to, with Cody on Monday Night Raw and, and Roman on SmackDown, where are they going to get the interaction? How are they going to get the two in the ring together? How are they going to sell that match? Because that, that's definitely not the match they wanted. Like they can, they can spin it in every way, shape, and form and try and tell us this is the main event we were always going with. They wanted The Rock. Yeah. I mean, they, were, they, were, they wanted The Rock. So why do you think that he didn't do it? Like... Who, the Rock? Yeah, I, it's. I, I mean, to be honest, I think it's money. I like. I think point blank, at the end of the day, it's money. I think that the Rock is a movie star now. Mm -hmm. He's not a wrestler, so they lay out a script, like a line of scripts. He's, this is what your year is going to look like, mm -hmm. and I think he looks at it and he goes, "If this date is open, I figure I can work into this." But it does take time to train. He doesn't want to go into a wrestling ring and embarrass himself. Oh yeah. So he's got to set aside, and and every minute, like time is money. Every minute that he spends training for wrestling is for that one payday, whereas he can probably shoot three movies in that amount of time. True. He also has to look at it like he, he what is he, 50 something years old? You, you also have to wonder, is the wear and tear worth it? Am I going to injure myself? Do I get an injury that then takes me out of, of being able to do movies? Oh, yeah. So there's, I think there's so the much risk. risk reward of it. I imagine that he's managed by like agencies that, that tell him that's a bad idea. I think for The Rock to actually come back and wrestle, he has to put his foot down yeah. and kind of say, no, I'm, I'm going to fucking do this. Well, I just remember, too, he's just doing that whole football thing, too, right? So he's got the X. Like, there's a lot on The Rock's plate. And so I think that as compelling as it is for wrestling fans, I think for The Rock, it may not. And then what? So is the storyline that he comes back and gets beat by Roman Reigns? Yeah, and then what stupid, is that for him? As stupid as it sounds, 
what does that do for The Rock's career in general, for his wrestling legacy? Like, what does that do? He may look back and go, my wrestling is fine. I can show up, do a couple appearances every so often and have fun, but I'm done in the ring. And, and I know he likes to keep the idea open. He likes to tease and go, well, maybe next year. Well, I'm not ready this year. Maybe next year. I think that I honestly think I think this was it. I think this was the last opportunity. The clock runs out at this point. Yeah. For me, as far as the rock goes. But I, I lead me back to the point is this is that's the match they wanted. That was Hollywood, right? That was the I, I think that the whole Hollywood thing was being built around a Hollywood star being in the main event. It was Hollywood versus Roman Reigns, the rock Roman Reigns. Yeah, because I mean, what is the, the Hollywood theme really? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, just it's Hollywood. in Hollywood. That still makes sense. But I think that uh, while from a wrestling, a pure wrestling standpoint, I think Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns is the better main event. I think it will be a better match. I think it's more believable. I think everything around it, ultimately, we will benefit from that. But I don't think that's the WWE perspective because I don't think it's it's as, as financially viable as The Rock and Roman Reigns was. I don't think it's as marketable. I don't think... I think if The Rock wrestles... There's a ton of celebrities that come to see WrestleMania. I think yeah. without The Rock in the main event, you will get some celebrities that are wrestling fans, but I don't know that you're going to get the fanfare outside that you were really looking for when you so, brought The Rock in. Speaking of celebrities, do you think that we're going to get any rando celebrity like match? That's interesting because the celebrities right now that are kind of linked to WWE... I don't know how Hollywood centric they are. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, and I don't know enough about bad bunny, but does he resonate well in, in California or is he more of like know. a Miami, like South Texas type? I know he's big everywhere. That's yeah. not what I'm getting at. But I mean, as far as like, when you talk about a celebrity coming in, there has to be crossover over crossover or crossover. And so it's, it's like if bad bunny, which I don't even think bad Bunny's going to be a part of WrestleMania, but if he was, that's somebody who's always linked to WWE. Uh, I mean, once again, Pat McAfee's always a name they throw around, but I don't like what celebrity can you bring in at this point? I'm sure there will be celebrity involvement, mm -hmm. but I don't think, one thing that's happened over the last couple of years is, and you can blame Bad Bunny, you can blame Pat McAfee, you can blame Stephen Amill and these people, is the celebrities who have come in have started to take it serious. Yeah. So when they get in, Logan Paul even, right? They come in and they're impressive. It makes you realize how bad some of the celebrities from the past actually were. Which then leads... I, haven't, I didn't experience enough of them, so I wouldn't know. I mean, but I've seen, like, Snooki. I've seen... Uh, yeah, I own, the only one that I Maria saw was... Maria Manuos or whatever. The Snooki one that you showed me, I think, I've on seen, South Park. I mean, there's been quite a few celebrities who come in, and they're just... They're eye candy, right? They're yeah. a name so that people pay attention. They stand there. They get tagged in. They do one crazy thing, like Snooki did a back handspring. And then they're back out, and it's back to the wrestling. Like, with Logan Paul, you can count on Logan to wrestle. With Pat McAfee, mm -hmm. you can count on him to wrestle with bad bunny you can count on him to wrestle yeah i don't know who they can call upon right now that they can bring in that that'll wrestle like that and that would be impressive so i yeah i, I mean do they need a celebrity i think that they like one i don't know that the card's necessarily going to need one we talked about last week how the card was shaping up and i don't think there's any problems with the way wrestlemania is shaping up i think the only problem is is that they set expectation of like for for the last 365 days we thought we were going to get Roman Reigns versus The yeah. Rock, and now we're getting uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, which shouldn't feel like a letdown, but there's a certain piece of it that feels like a letdown. Yeah. Now, we did get the, uh, the, the, the names for the United States title and the uh, Elimination Chamber match. Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, Johnny Gargano, Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, and Montez Ford. That's kind of, that's, that's lining out the, uh, the group for the Elimination Chamber. Who okay. do you think, who's the favorite in that group for you? Um, are we going to like who is my favorite or like? Who do you think will win? What what makes most sense to to call that match now that we know who's in it? I'm thinking Seth Rollins. So you think Seth? I think I Austin do. Theory. Okay. I don't think he. I think this to me when I look at this the way they've set this group up, it looks to me if you go through Austin Theory seems most likely. I think he goes into WrestleMania. As the United States champion uh, probably faces against John Cena, that makes sense. Seth Rollins looks to be headed on a path to Logan Paul. Okay. So he doesn't need to, to carry the title. Johnny Gargano 
would be fun. I think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I think you need more of a build up than just letting him win it in the chamber. Bronson Reed is a wild card. I don't think they're ready for him, but I think he will be destructive in that match. Damian Priest, maybe outside of Austin Theory, would be the favorite because of how hot the Judgment Day kind of is currently on TV. And then Montez Ford, who I think should win it, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think out of that group of people, Montez Ford is the most exciting character that WWE has. Oh, yeah. To me, he's everything that Austin Theory is trying to be, but he's already there. Mm -hmm. The problem with Montez Ford is I think then you get into the, do you break the street profits up? And I think with Angelo Dawkins just now kind of coming into his own, I think that it's it's not time to break them up. It's time to lean on the the street profits and and let them. He's really fucking like, shown like I, I mean just taking his like physical uh, his physical fitness shape. yeah like I've seen him do moves that I never thought that he could do no, he's he's awesome he's impressive he's fun to watch so I had a rando question for Go you for um who would you say is the biggest star in the judgment day besides Rhea Ripley <sighs> biggest star yeah like who holds like the most like star power I, I mean as fucked up as this can sound I think Dominic Mysterio Right, like from like a hate point of view, well, even like with a love hate, hate point of view. I think it's like you it's, love to hate him and you hate both, to love him. Right, I think he has that like that 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 kind of conflicting fan well, base, which is really funny because that whole Judgment Day storyline, in my opinion, is really built around him. Kind of like almost like come on, Dom, like making fun of him at some point. Yeah, I mean, if and you remember, then, there was a Judgment Day without Dominic Mysterio, it's and hard they weren't to think as interesting. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I think it helped elevate Rhea Ripley too, like the whole mommy thing. Like you know what I mean? Definitely. I think I 100. percent I think Rhea Ripley has benefited the most from the Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. I think that Damian Priest has benefited the least from the Judgment Day. I think that Finn Balor has basically been par for the course, right? Yeah. Finn Balor's always this guy who seems like he should be relevant, but just never quite gets. I think that he will get a little bit of a moment oh, going into leprechaun. If, if they do Edge versus Finn Balor <laughs> at WrestleMania, he'll get a little bit of a moment. But I do think, like, if you're asking me, I think that Dominic Mysterio has gotten the most shine from... Which is interesting because I've actually kind of a little bit have liked him lately. Just from but, an but entertainment I've never, point I've of view. I've never disliked Dominic. So the, the misconception is that I've said things about Dominic I did. Mysterio I did that, not like that him. make me appear to not like... I don't dislike Dominic Mysterio. I said he wasn't ready for the opportunities that he was being thrust into matches against edge and the main event of Monday night raw being thrown, you know, given, given big minutes on Monday night raw. I didn't think he was ready for that, but do I, do I dislike him? No. Do I think that what they're doing with the comedy elements of the judgment day is working for Dominic Mysterio? A hundred percent. I do. Yeah. I, that has made him the most likable he's ever been. Him understanding that he is a joke makes him th- don't 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 be oh, don't you know, flash I'm just, that I'm in my just face. Uh, adjusting my. All right, here. so we got we got the uh, we got the the names for the women's chamber. We got Oscar, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia, and Carmella. Any thoughts on that? I'm gonna go Oscar here. I'm with you. I think that it, I, this is a weird lineup of people because I mean, Carmella has no chance. This is essentially uh, lining up who's going to fight Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. That's what this is. That's what this is set up for. Okay. And when you look like this is weird because none of these names were really in the conversation a couple months ago. I think it Let's was always, it again. Who was it? Right. Who's in the match? Yeah. Oscar, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia and Carmella. Now, I think they're hinting at Natalia getting beat up before she gets there. I think really? that may have been what they did on SmackDown where, and maybe it's Ronda Rousey or Shayna Baszler takes her spot. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't think that matters because I don't think any of them are winning it. Um, would, would Bianca Belair, Ronda Rousey make sense? Um, Is that a match anybody's interested? I don't think so. No, because I they both, like, I don't mean to sound mean, but I don't feel like Ronda Rousey has very much personality. She's good lately about like building off other people, but she kind of reminds me of, who is it that just like that's mean to say it like they're better when they don't talk when she kind of just stands so. there and she I looks like serious better. so i, I like her with Shayna baser that's what i'm saying like i like the part that where she plays with Shayna baser where she just kind of stands there and she's like the muscle to me is what talks. i see it I, she talks with Shayna baser so i don't think she's just forgettable what it says so i disagree i don't think i think it's that she's uninterested 
I don't think she's interested in a singles thing. I think that she likes being out there with Shayna Baszler. She's more comfortable. She's more comfortable when her friend is standing next to her. And I think so. Why not book her that way? I like her. I like the, them together. I like her in a tag team championship match against damage control. It, if it's that not going to be, be Becky and, and Bailey, I'm okay with it being damage control. That's where I want her. So I'm with you. But I, when I look at this list, Raquel Rodriguez is a long shot. Raquel, is it time? To, could you do Raquel Bianca this early? I, I don't think it so. works. I think it works. I think it builds a new star, yeah. but I think more than likely Oscar is the most over with the fans right now. Dude, like, her new character is crazy looking. Yeah. People, people were excited for that. So I think that that is probably the best bet for, uh, for WrestleMania. And then we got Madcap Moss. Madcap, Madcap Moss won his opportunity to take on Gunther for the, uh, intercontinental championship belt. Good for Mad Cat Moss, but that's 100% just a placeholder. Mm-hmm. I feel bad because they keep sticking Mad Cap in these ultimately. And we're going to talk about Baron Corbin in a little bit, but there's a few wrestlers that I'd say WWE puts them in positions to fail. And this is a failing position. You, you, Mad Cap has all the talent in the world. He has all the athleticism. He actually has a likable personality. Mm-hmm. But like to put him against Gunther. When you know Gunther's not losing the Intercontinental title the month before WrestleMania. Like, yeah. it, it's it's pretty well established. It's either going to be Gunther, Drew McIntyre, Gunther, Sheamus, or all three of those guys in the ring at the same time. So to, to throw Madcap Moss into this situation, he's basically going to just hold the spot for those other guys until... Uh, until we get around to WrestleMania, like to properly building the matches. But I don't understand. This is, and maybe I'm just noticing it this year, but this is one of the first WrestleManias where I noticed they're not trying to build these matches, you know, months in advance. It's almost like they're going to spin the card. We kind of knew before what, we, what was going to happen. Yeah, we, I guess you knew, but like it, all of that is, is based on predictions and people trying to figure things out. But they haven't really teased anything between Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre. Right now, uh, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre are locked up with the Viking Raiders, right? And Hit Row. I think so, yeah. And all of that stuff. They're kind of in the mix of the tag team world. So it'll be interesting to see how they spin all this stuff we talk about. Like, they haven't really teased any more of Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio. Yeah. I mean, it's and like you said, there's 60 days. How long do I, they have? I to think do it's this, really? 60 days. I mean, whatever it is, it's we, we have one premium live event between now and WrestleMania, and I just don't feel like they've started to build those matches yet. Um,